Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm really trying my best to keep my presentations organized and easy to follow. So I pray that what I'm about to show you today is easy to follow and somewhat organized. It's just that as I'm reading the word, I was reading from Ezekiel 27 and I think I may have identified potentially this entity of Ezekiel chapter 27 surrounding this subject I want to show you what I have on the screen but I will begin with the news a, a sort of I would say not necessarily breaking news but it's it's current news that's just come out on breakingisraelnews.com and I'm going to share share that with you oh my goodness I thank you so much friends for bearing with me I fumble my words so often I just oh I wish I could polish up somewhat but I, I really appreciate you and thank you for your time listen let me show you what I have on the screen okay friends so basically I've got this highlighted because I want to remind myself to go to that page after I show you this news so breaking Israel news had this report Check out the title. I was just saying yesterday how Islam, its presence over the Temple Mount region, Jerusalem, full stop, is keeping the Christians and the Jews, the biblical faith, under subjugation. Because that's exactly what Islam is here to do. It's here to abrogate and to make the other people especially the people of the book the jews and the christians to feel subdued listen to this news let me just turn the camera a little bit thank you let's hope okay it's going to move back all right camera do what you want it's got his mind of its own israel's new police are challenges cops over arresting jewish worshippers on temple mount in the days to come, the mount of Hashem's house shall stand firm above the mountains and tower above the hills, and all the nations shall gaze on it with joy. Isaiah 2.2, 2, the Israel Bible. Okay. Right, what happened? Upon hearing about police indictments against Jewish pilgrims, I'll have to, oh, I don't like these commercials. Let me put my marker there against Jewish pilgrims who prayed on the Temple Mount, Israel's Interior Security Minister Amir Ohana from the Likud Party sent a sharp letter on Thursday to the head of the Police Prosecution Divisions, reports Marco Rishon. The Interior Security Minister's main role is to oversee police activity, right? Ohana wrote in his letter to Lieutenant General Dado Zamir, Several days ago, I found out about an indictment that was filed with the Jerusalem Magistrates Court against three young men who were charged with crimes categorized as disturbing a police officer in the performance of his duties. And a recent indictment that was brought to my attention whereby a man was accused of saying the Kaddish prayer on Jerusalem Day near the Shar ha Harahamim Plaza on the Temple Mount, while the other members of his group with whom he ascended the Mount answered Amen. I must confess I had to read the text several times. I have never seen indictments like these before. In the Jerusalem Magistrate Court in the capital of Israel, indictments were filed against Jews in the holiest place in the world for the Jewish people, where their souls yearned after thousands of years in exile and bowed and prayed Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel. That's their crime. That's their sin. It's hard for me to explain my feelings upon reading this. I cannot understand nor can I accept it. Maybe you should have a chat with me, dear, because it's regarding the abrogation of Islam. This is subjugation, abrogation, domination of Islam. This should not be a surprise to the people in the region, but because of our appeasement of Islam, um, no one will really sort of call it for what it is. Everyone agrees that the role of the Israel police to enforce law and order, to ma maintain public peace, especially in places where public order is particularly sensitive and explosive like the Temple Mount. And despite the restriction of ritual activity with visible external prey items, which in and of itself is problematic with regards to human rights, freedom of religion and worship, 
Still the Temple Mount, oh, still the Temple Mount is the holiest place for the Jewish people for generations, and some would say it is inconsistent with Israel's values as a Jewish and democratic state. One should not accept a reality interpreted as conduct that could lead to a violation of public peace, which entails such a serious and extreme indictment against these young people. For all the implications that it entails, including marring them with a criminal record, the arrest of one of the young people who prayed, is it possible that the state of Israel will find itself accusing young Jews for, of reciting the sacred call that Jews have given their lives for, lives over for generations, filing an indictment against them as if they were criminals endangering the public peace, the letter read. A copy of the letter was also sent to Attorney General Avichai Mandelbit, who is mentioned in the letter with some sarcasm in his role as acting state secretary. Wow. Oh, it, it's just, it's, it's madness, isn't it? It's just, I mean, I think we need to stop, pause and think about what is this telling us, you guys? To me, my understanding of what's going on here, step back, take a look, what's going on? There's a particular entity, a principality that is keeping the Jewish people under subjugation. The same entity is also the world's top persecutor of Christians around the world. I think that should tell us where the Antichrist beast system is going to come from, don't you think? I think it's like it's staring us in the face and we're looking for this other mysterious figure, this system to arise that will do what the Islam is doing currently already right now. The only thing that's missing within Islam, within the Ummah, is leadership. They don't have united leadership. And, of course, when he does appear, and they call him the Mahdi, I think that's going to seal the deal for many people within the Islamic world. Sunni and Shia, possibly Turk and some Arabs. But I, I do see that the Lord is showing us exactly what is going on here. It's, it's almost plain to see, isn't it? Anyway... That was an intro, but I want to focus today. Let me take you back. I was going to do Neom City, but I, my focus went to this because as I was reading this article, I just Googled Turkey relationship with Saudi Arabia, Neom City. And this 2017 article shows that they have already an agreement to work together regards to investment, Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Turkey commended Neon Project, which was announced by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in October 2017, by the way, along with giant development and economic projects launched by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia recently. Turkish Economy Minister Nihad Zebeki hailed the huge development projects launched by Saudi Arabia, especially Neon Project, which would turn the kingdom into a leading model in various aspects of life and create more investment opportunities. Very interesting. This project will have huge and positive effects on the economy in the region, besides attracting large capitals and investments, he added. On Wednesday, Istanbul witnessed the organization of Saudi Turkish Business and Investment Forum that targeted reinforcing business and economic cooperation between the two. I couldn't find anything current re regards to this forum, but I came across this. Istanbul. November 2017, the Saudi, can you see that friends? The Saudi Turkish Business and Investment Forum was held today in Istanbul. Mind you, this was back in 2017. Things have changed a heck of a lot since then. In the presence of Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Majid bin Abdullah, okay. Turkish Econ Economy Minister Niha Zibeki, and a number of Saudi and Turkish businessmen. The gathering aims at enhancing trade. She's a harlot. Even though the Islamic world, let's say the Turkic and various other Iranian parts of the Islamic world don't like Saudi, they will still trade with her, of course. If there's a benefit for their own countries, they, they will be very strategic. At enhancing trade and economic cooperation between the two countries, in statements during the event, the two ministers hailed strength of Saudi-Turkish relations. Oh, things have changed a lot since then. But it does go to show about this, what I was telling you, friends, about this treachery, this deceit, 
this mistrust between the Islamic nations, and this is Islam's problem. But they will, I see all nations eventually participating in Neom City project because everybody has an opportunity to get wealthy, and why would they bypass it? So if we're thinking that Neom City is potentially Mystery Babylon, did you know that Turkey has also its mega project envisioned for 2023? I remember a year ago I touched on this in my video, Islamic Nations and Israel in the Bible. It's uh, about a two hour long video. That's probably still one of my best videos today. It's older, but it's very detailed. I go through so many scriptures in that, bo in that video, friends. I have to remember to include it in the description box. I mentioned this, but I was actually sitting there taking a look at this um, various major, mega projects that Turkey has. This is where I was when I was looking at um, the seaports, because what brought me here, remember I mentioned, it was Ezekiel 27. And if I can quick, quickly bring your attention to that scripture, I'm going to come back to this. Ezekiel 27, and if you continue to read over across chapter 28, it's talking about um, this satanic being who was the seal of perfection. He was in the Garden of Eden, in the Garden of God. But chapter 27 seems to be showing me the kingdom or the seat of where um, the Antichrist will be ruling and reigning from. Of course, he would have his own seat, his own headquarters, right? And I think this is where it's going to be, friends. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Now, son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyre and say to Tyre, You who are situated at the entrance of the sea, merchant of the peoples on many coastlands, thus says the Lord God, O Tyre, you have said, I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the midst of the seas. Your builders have perfected your beauty. They made all your planks of fir trees from Sinir. And it goes on. I just spoke about this scripture in a very recent video. And I can't recall the title of it. But those of you who were following that video, you will you'll remember when I was talking about Turkish invasion of the seas including Cyprus and Greece and the, oh, I think it was the video when I was talking about Lebanon and why Turkey's involvement in Lebanon is really important because I think they were behind it. I know that is conjecture, I'm just speculating, but it's just ever so convenient why Turkey has come to Lebanon's aid, like within 24 hours. So I was reading this scripture, friends. Like I said, it's not, I'm, I'm trying to be as organized as I possibly can. Because this is what I'm like when I'm studying. I have several things on the screen, several scriptures in the Bible noted down. And the Holy Spirit is helping me to see things. And on, uh, on other issues, he's helping me eliminate. So I'm not majoring on minors. I think this is major, which is why I'm focusing on it. Those from Persia, Lydia and Libya were in your army as men of war. What does it say there? Kitim, Western lands, especially Cyprus. Oh, it's going to be doing deals there. Let's go back. Libya, well, we know where Libya is, right, friends? We're in your army as men of war. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. That would make perfect sense. Think about it, friends. If Turkey's Erdogan is trying to conquer Greece, Cyprus, Libya, in there's a proxy war taking place there between Turkey and Egypt right now and indirectly with uh, Russia there's a battle taking place there right friends so it would make sense that the men of war would join his kingdom even Persia included because remember Gog the Gog Magog invasion of Israel includes Persia, Libya. Were in your army as men of war, they hung shield and helmet in you. 
Tarshish was your merchant because of your many luxury goods. They gave their silver, iron, tin, and lead for your goods. Yavan, Tubal, Meshach were your traders. They bartered human lives and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. Everyone is trading. There's this back and forth trading. Look, even Didan is there in Arabia, Syria. The Bible is a Middle Eastern book. It's going to talk to us about Middle Eastern nations. Very, very geopolitical, isn't it? So that led me to explore some more of this region. So I'm looking at Tyre. And I'm looking at the coastal regions. And I'm considering what Turkey is doing right now in Greece. Now let me zoom out and show you the wealth the potential natural resource wealth that is within his reach at this moment. You've got the Black Sea, the Bosporus, all this part of the Mediterranean, you guys. And I think the Lord is showing me at least, and you can please share your thoughts on this, that Satan needs somewhere for him to hang out when he's finally thrown out of the heavens. I'm paraphrasing. So this is all in preparation. Jesus Christ, his own word, says the seat of Satan is in this region, the throne of Satan. Now, let's go back to where Tyre is. Tyre, down here, big explosion goes off. Turkey's the first one to go there to help them. Now, Lebanon and Turkey are having stronger ties interesting there's so much to talk about friends because i also wanted to investigate the relationship between hezbollah and hamas hezbollah and hamas hamas has been given um, citizenship here a platform hezbollah iran's proxies down there i'm thinking that there has to be some sort of, I don't know if they're going to be negotiating something. They have done so in the past. Turkey has been working with Hamas and Hezbollah in the past. So it's, it, this is interesting to me, friends. And I think the word of God, if you read that whole chapter, 27, it's very detailed. It's talking about ships, ports, and that, which is what I was looking at, to be honest. I was looking at that also. Now, let me go back to that page. I had it selected on ports. There are many ports here. I selected this one here. Industrial site going on there. Another port city. I mean, this is going to be a huge port city, isn't it? They're basically, you see this region here? How do I deselect that? This region here, this is the gateway to the west from the east into Europe. Very, very pivotal strategic location. And he knows this. He, he mentioned this in his speech at the United Nations. Massive. And I was looking at, well, I was on the commerce because I'm looking at the scripture verses in 27 Ezekiel how this tire, this sort of king, is going to be seated at the borders in the midst of the seas. Seas, but Tyre. And he's doing trade with various regional nations. And then you've got Mystery Babylon down here. Well, the city, I believe, is going to be Neom. Neom City. Do I have a picture for those of you who are listening to me for the first time? Do I have an image of Neom City? Oh, it's going to take a while. So that's Neom City. That's the size. And it's very, very similar, very close to ancient Edom. Which is why I'm having to divide this message because... The top left side of all my tabs are related to Edom, Petra, the home of Islam, Revelation 18, and 
middle right, I'm focused here on the Turkish issue here. And I'm looking at both of these regions, friends. Let's go back to Turkey. It's a major pro mega projects. I can't seem to get that word right. Let's zoom back out. Now, in this time of economic crisis, the canal is Istanbul. I mean, it's going to be a beautiful place, isn't it? You've got these two massive countries in the Middle East who are building infrastructure on such a scale, even though there are skeptics saying, well, mm, they may not, they may be successful as people are regarding um, Neom. I want you to read this also, friends. I'm sharing with you what I find while it's current as I possibly can. If I find that it's, that it's important, it's important news. Why? To help us understand pieces falling into place, regional players making their moves, and how, biblically speaking, we are able to gauge the times. I believe, like you and I, many of us friends, are really feeling that the end times is right here. We are Things are speeding up at such a scale right now that it's, it really is hard to keep up. But can I just also encourage you, friends, to please make sure to remain in the Word of God. Like I said, this is what led me to research these things, reading the scripture. I was in Ezekiel 27 this morning, and I thought, well, let me begin, and let's see if it is so out in the world. Let's see if there's any weight to this. Is this prophetic? And there you go. I'm finding this link between Turkey and Syria because Turkey, I believe, wants to secure Lebanon for itself because why? It's a strategic, resourceful location. Turkey is allegedly sending weapons into Lebanon and Syria, Al Arabiya English reported on Thursday, citing security sources. Which, so what was this, a week ago? We are pretty worried about what's going on. The Turks are sending an incredible amount of weapons into the north. Into the north. Cited a Lebanese army intelligence source as saying following a surveillance operation. So this is coming from a Lebanese army intelligence source. We asked about the flow of Turkish weapons, a senior Lebanese diplomat told Al Arabiya. There were no specific details, but we know they're active. We are keeping an eye on it and staying in contact with the United States administration, the diplomat said. Oh, Lord God. You know, whatever's written in the word of God, friends, is going to happen, isn't it? <clears throat> Let's just pray for the faithful in those regions before things get really out of control. Firaz Maksud, an adjunct professor at George Washington University, told Al Arabia that Turkey might see Lebanon as a relatively easy country in which to extend its sphere of influence. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because they're vulnerable. Look at, look at what's going on in Lebanon for the past 10 years or so. Thank you, Hezbollah. Thank you, Iran. Look at the situation in Lebanon. This is incredibly fragile. Economically, they've been beat down. It's creating this vacuum. And it's, it's just like in an abusive situation where their victim is vulnerable due to shock, trauma, rejection, past hurts, and, or anything like that. A narcissist can come in and easily sweep that victim off their feet pretending to be their saviour. You see this narcissistic dynamic at play in the world arena amongst the leaders of the nations. It's the same dynamics. It's, the, it's this battle between, like the word of God in the book of Psalms says, between the wicked and the righteous, the wheat and the tares. I don't know if that's a good analogy to include there, the wheat and the tares. Anyhow, they might be growing Turkish involvement in Lebanon. Perhaps it is an ex inexpensive arena for the Turks to play in. It's already, it's readily available and doesn't cost much, Maksud said. Turkey's Vice President, Fuad Okte, Foreign Minister, Mevlut Kafusoglu, oh, these names, visited Beirut after devastating August 4th explosions in Beirut and said that Ankara was offering to rebuild 
the port, of course, because the port was what was damaged. And which is why I'm suspecting this dude, Erdogan, is behind it. Not directly, but of course they have interests. They have proxies. They got Hamas. I'm sure they're working with Hezbollah. They have done in the past. This person added that Turkey would grant citizenship to our brothers who say, I am Turkish, I am Turkmen, and express their desire to become a citizen. What is that? Sort of taking the Ottoman oath? These are our Turkish president at the one's instructions. They consider him as a caliph already. I mean, look at that, the, the language there. Interesting, friends. This is similarly to what the people who were the who the the kings the ten kings who would give their allegiance their authority and power although they only receive it for an hour this is how they give it over to the antichrist willingly and this is similarly how i'm saying that word now similarly oh this is how the people who willingly take the mark of the beast will give their allegiance to the antichrist the beast knowingly that he, he the mark of the beast is in the image of the dragon turkish aid delivered to lebanon after blast strengthens bilateral ties of course of course it will money talks right you guys when you're in a situation where you've been beat down and battered and you get somebody coming over to help save you you're not going to think twice this is what's happening here let me enlarge the text Oh my goodness, am I making sense, friends? Remember the scripture. <sighs> the foundational scripture that I began researching this was Ezekiel 27. Persia, Lydia, Libya, Tarshish, Raja, Mershon, Dubal, Meshach, Didan, Syria, Damascus. All the regions where Turkey is trying to grow in influence are going to become merchants of... of uh, the prince of Tyre. Arabia and all the princes of Kedar were your regular merchants. They traded with you in lambs and rams and goats. This is why I see this betrayal, this treachery. When the, when the, when the Lord God speaks about the kings of the earth giving their allegiance to the dragon because the Lord gives them one mind that the, for his purposes that they will turn on the harlot. There's this backstabbing, great betrayal that's going to happen between the Antichrist beast and Mystery Babylon. And I'm thinking, this is how it's going to happen. They're, both of them are going to be entering into trade, both the north and the south, even though there's going to be this hidden hostility. And in fact, if you read the book of Daniel, chapter 11, I'm having to re-review the book of Daniel, friends, especially chapter 11. Now, people say that that's just a breakdown of what takes place in chapter 7 and chapter 8 of Daniel. But I'm, I'm reading things in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, and I, myself, I am having to rethink about what's going to take place between the king of the north and the king of the south. Friends, this Antichrist person, the little horn, he's not going to be just the one guy who's going to show up. According to the book of Daniel, chapter 11, there's going to be several different key players that may look like the Antichrist, but it's not going to be him. Oh my goodness, I'm all over the shop. Please forgive me. That's the state of my mind at the moment. I'm back and forth in these scriptures, and it's very exciting times, and the Lord is sharpening me, and he's also correcting me, and he's also <laughs> quickening me to receive the word in 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 measure you know he's not he's not like flooding me with revelation after revelation he's keeping me humble friends cuz i get a lot of people looking to me now and asking me questions and i don't have all the answers friends i'm sharing with you my studies my research and and i would like and i welcome your feedback even criticism as long as you be kind the ships of Tarshish were carriers of your merchandise. You were filled and very glorious in the midst of the seas. There's this whole thing about this guy being in the midst of the seas. You were filled and very glorious in the midst of the seas. Your oarsmen brought you into many waters, but the east wind broke you in the midst of the seas. The east wind broke you in the midst of the seas. Oh my. His destruction is going to be at the seas. 
Now, some people have said that this could be Mystery Babylon. I don't agree with that, friends. I don't agree with it. Mystery Babylon is an entity that is a wilderness, a desert surrounded by the seas. Massive pagan harlotry going on there. There's a seduction of the world's kings and leaders and nations. There's also trade and commerce. You can see all of the merchants that have been made rich by her. She's also a big port city. But so is this Tyre character. It's all revolving around the seas. Let's take another look at this map here. Oh my goodness, you guys. Things, these scriptures have to come to pass. This is what I say to myself. It's okay. It's got to happen. It has to come to pass. But I, it's like we're seeing the pieces forming right before our eyes. It's, it's, it's something else, isn't it? Look at the oceans that surround it. And this is a very wealthy, rich ocean bed here. Strategically, I see all this, this Persia, Persia goes as far as Afghanistan, Pakistan includes. So the, the Gog is going to want to include all these nations in his group, his confederacy, completely surrounding Israel and Arabia. Oh my goodness, you guys. I think I might end it there. <coughs> A lot to think about. So I finished this article. Turkey sends weapons into Lebanon via Syria. Why? We need to ask ourselves why. What's going on? Lebanon is fragile. Is there going to be <clears throat> an instalment, a coup, where well, the government has already resigned? They're very fragile, very vulnerable right now. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. I read that to you. Another thing, I like this website, Ahavan News. <clears throat> Look what else is reported here. <clears throat> August the 12th. Turkey visas Saudi Arabia as protector of Lebanon's Sunnis. Remember friends, I'm telling you about this Sunni Shia conflict. Turkish Arab conflict, Muslim Brotherhood versus the Arabian UAE Israel bloc. <coughs> Excuse me, including the USA. But at the same time, the USA is allowing Turkey to do this. Observers in Lebanon pointed out that the total absence of any Saudi political role in Lebanon after the Beirut explosion at a time when Turkey was quick to present itself as a political and economic actor in the country. <clears throat> Ankara sought to take advantage of declining Saudi interest in Lebanon and of Iran's wariness about being conspicuously presented, pr present in a setting drawing a lot of Western attention. Observers pointed out that Turkish President Recep Erdogan reacted quickly, yes he did, to the Beirut disaster and dispatched to the Lebanese capital Turkish Vice President Fawad Dokte as his personal emissary, accompanied by Foreign Minister and a number of Turkish officials, confirming Ankara's keenness, overly keenness, on being perceived as a major player in the Lebanese scene. Is anybody else interested in this stuff that I'm sharing with you friends? Is it just me? I'm focused on this region because this is the region where the Antichrist is going to come from. The regional focus of the Bible prophecy is this region. 
and I'm interested. I'm being a watchman and I want to be awake. I do not want to be asleep. Are you awake, friends? Are you also being a watchman? <clears throat> Riyadh <clears throat> did not hide its dissatisfaction with political developments in Lebanon even before the explosion. It had stopped providing economic aid to the country and downgraded its diplomatic mission in Beirut. According to senior Saudi officials, Riyadh believes that the Lebanese state has completely fallen under Hezbollah's sway, which prevents Saudi Arabia's presence in Lebanon. Whether politically or investment matters, there's going to be a divide between the north and the south, two kingdoms. <clears throat> the northern bloc, the southern bloc, and everyone is making their move. They're forming their own groups. Strategy, logistics, protection, security, prosperity. It's like there's a, there's a build up towards something greater in a bad way. I could read this whole thing, but. Eighteen hours ago, <clears throat> Hezbollah Hamas, I just put that in Google to find out what is going on between these two groups. Eighteen hours ago, friends, IDF strikes Hamas, Hezbollah sites as tensions on Israel's Lebanon border. <sighs> Things never change. Israel attacks Hezbollah posts after shots fired at soldiers. What are they doing? <clears throat> Sometimes I look at these attacks and strikes as a distraction to distract Israel. <clears throat> Sudan. <clears throat> I talked about this yesterday. Anyhow, not only is Sudan identified with the symbolic cartoon conference which declared in 1967, no peace with Israel, no recognition of Israel, no negotiations with it. But until recently, Sudan served as logistical backing for terrorist organizations in the Middle East. Hezbollah, Algerian groups, Hamas, the PLO, and even Al-Qaeda were given training camps in Sudan where there were also stockpiles of weapons. Sudan is very tight with Turkey, of course, because it's a part of the Gog Alliance coming. Why do I have this video here? Okay, so I, I put in Google, YouTube. I wanted to see what the latest developments were regards to the Turkish me mega projects. There's loads of videos on it. I mean, tons. <sighs> two years ago, two years ago. Am I able to play one? I'm not gonna play that, that's 14 minutes long. Turkey is undergoing a building boom, and leading the charge is the Turkish government $400 billion spending spree. In return, the government expects a modernized infrastructure while creating thousands of new jobs. Among the mega projects is the new $25 billion Istanbul airport. The annual passenger capacity of the airport is expected to be 150 million, making it the world's largest. Turkey the world's is largest the most, most uh, strategically important uh, geographically located country in the world as we know from the history as well it has always been a barrier and a bridge between the two continents <sighs> europe and asia and then there is what the turkish president calls a crazy project the 10 billion dollar plan will include the construction of a 45 kilometer canal parallel to the Bosphorus Strait that divides Europe and Asia. The aim is to reduce shipping traffic through the Bosphorus and minimize risks and dangers, particularly those associated with tankers. Back on land, this is said to be Europe's longest rail network, stretching 10,000 kilometers. This $45 billion high-speed train project will spread all across the country. 
And this addition to the Istanbul Suburban Rail Network called the Marmaray passes under the Bosphorus Street in four minutes. Its price tag, just over $5 billion. Also being built is a financial center in the heart of Istanbul. The $5 billion project takes inspiration from New York's Wall Street. Turkey also aims to become a regional energy hub. Once this $10 billion pipeline is built, it will be used to transfer natural gas from Azerbaijan to consumers in Europe. The Turkish government says it's guiding the nation towards a path of long-term economic growth. And one of its main strategies is the development and modernization of the country's infrastructure. Here in Istanbul, wherever you look, it's hard to miss one of these mega structures. There have been concerns about some of these ambitious projects. But after being elected as Turkey's first executive president on June 24, hopes are high that President Erdogan will be able to push these mega projects through. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is selected as the first president of Turkey. This will also have an importance on catching the interest of the FDIs and foreign investors. And President Erdogan's projections are pretty optimistic. Turkey, dünyanın en büyük 10 ekonomisi arasına girmeyi hedeflediğimiz 2023 vizyonumuzu adım adım hayata geçiriyoruz. But only time will tell if all these investments are enough to take Turkey into the top 10 by 2023, the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Turkish Republic. Omar Kablan, Straight Talk. Oh my goodness, friends. Did you hear that? He, I, I, I can't believe I missed this. Erdogan is Turkey's first president. So is he then the first king of Daniel, the goat in Daniel? Let me search that now. Daniel, uh, let's see, Daniel 8, New King James Version, because that's the Bible I read from, Bible, Bible Hub. <clears throat> oh my goodness, you guys, okay, KJV's fine. I don't need to faff around that right now. Because in verse, let's go to 19. Oh my goodness, you guys. I've said this before. I've suspected that Erdogan is the first king of the goat. Let's begin verse 19. Am I in the right place, friends? Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. This is about the end, the end times, friends. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia, Kurdish region, Iran today. And the rough goat is the king of Grisha. And remember, friends, when I went and did all that concordant stuff, I went to look up the word Grisha, and it was actually not Greece, but Yavan, which would be today's modern Turkey region. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, for kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, this is the guy who will be the Antichrist. This is why I don't agree that Erdogan is the dude, because there's some things that are missing in that equation. Are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding shall, and understanding dark sentences 
shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. So you've got mighty people there and the holy people. There are two categories of people groups. The mighty could represent strong, prosperous nations. And the people, the holy people, well, that's obvious. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. What does that mean? By peace treaties? outsmarting the other one by crafty wisdom demonic wisdom he shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken with that hand you see this is the guy who will be the antichrist who has the audacity to stand against the prince of princes he's not here yet Erdogan considering he's the first president of turkey oh my goodness you guys let me think this through one moment so it's nearly a hundred years up since turkey has been um, a secular state prior to that it was the islamic ottoman this guy wants to bring take things back in history to the golden age of islam and i believe that is the revival the seventh king kingdom of uh, Revelation chapter uh, 17. Remember friends, the seven mountains. The Ottoman was the seventh mountain. That came after the sixth. The sixth was Rome. Are you, are you with me friends? I haven't lost you, have I? So Turkey's Erdogan is the first president of Turkey in these hundred years. It'll be hundred years in 2023. So, it would make sense that he's ramping things up in order for the next person to come in. Other one can't be the Antichrist. I think he is this guy here, the horn. The first horn on the goat. Let's continue. Um, at verse 26. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut up thou the vision for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick. Certain days afterward I rose up and I was astonished. But none understood it. Oh, Daniel, you're not on your own. I don't think many of us understand the vision. Thankfully, the angel comes and to give the interpretation. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Okay. Uh, I need to think this through. <laughs> Because I speculated Erdogan could potentially be the goat, the first horn of the goat. <sighs> map, I'm looking for the map. And Iran, Medo Persia, being the ram. is interesting isn't it so what do we expect to see if that is so if the one turkey yavan goat is the first horn then the scripture says that horn let me repeat verse 20 the ram which you saw having the two horns they are the kings of media and persia And the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between its eyes is the first king. So, could we say he's the first president of Turkey? So, what do we expect to see after this? Verse 22. As for the broken horn, so he breaks, something breaks him. <clears throat> I'm sorry, friends. I keep nudging the camera. I'm all over the place. As for the broken horn and the four that stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall arise out of that nation, but not with its power. Verse 23, and in the latter time of their indignation, I'm reading from Daniel 8, verse 23, and in the latter time of their, indig in their kingdom, 
When the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands. So he's not here yet. He's going to arise after Erdogan is gone. Oh, my goodness. So is that the next thing to look out for, friends? I don't know. I'm rather excited about this, but also very terrified. If something happens to Turkey's Erdogan, that we should expect a formation or a coming together of four more kings in this region. And I did mention in an older video, I suspect it may be the Turkic Council, friends, the Turkic Council Union, which includes four Turkic speaking nations as member states. Rather now it's five permanent members, or is it four? I have to remember. My goodness, I read so much, I forget. I believe these guys are there. Azerbaijan is one of them, Uzbekistan, and I think Kazakhstan, all the stars, these are Islamic nations here. Remember, Azerbaijan, friends, has a very high Shiite population. So you would think it's natural progression for um, bilateral ties would be with Iran. But in fact, I think it's playing both sides. It's closer to Turkey. Turkey is helping Azerbaijan <clears throat> in Armenia right now because they want to create a block across this whole region here, you guys. Oh, my goodness gracious. Listen, let me end the video here, and I'll come back again and talk some more. I'm just going to end the video there, friends, and I think that was very interesting to explore some of this live with you as I was recording. And I think we may have come across something quite important. Could Turkey be, friends, that whole scripture is regarding the end times, the latter times. So where does that put us on the timeline of things? Pretty close, closer than I thought. I'll be back again soon, please share this and um, stay in the word of God friends.